Hey there, I'm Gabe. And I'm Johnny. Well, I know Duke Nukem 3D is probably the best and most famous one, but we actually barely played it and this is the one that introduces to the Duke. This was the first third-person Duke Nukem game and was developed by Endspace. Basically, 3D Realms, the company that created the Duke, went over one day and said, what would you do if you had the Duke's license? And they answered, Tomb Raider. And the worst part is, we are not joking. The Endspace crew even called Time to Kill Duke Raider during development. There is even a Tomb Raider easter egg on the first level. In case you don't know, Duke Nukem is kind of a mashup of every 80s and 90s action hero in one super kick-ass human being who actually knows how awesome he actually is, which makes him one of the most full of himself arrogant walking parodies in video game history. It seems in most of his games, it's aliens attacking the Earth, and Duke is the only one who can stop them. In Time to Kill, not only are the aliens threatening the world, but history itself, so it's up to Duke to follow them for a few time periods and put an end to their plans and their lives. The game begins feeling brutally hard, seriously, just look how fast you die. But after the first few deaths and some messing around with the controllers, you quickly realize that if you shoot while sidewalking, suddenly all the enemies have worse aims than stormtroopers, and you probably get out of a shootout mostly unharmed. You can aim, but Duke's legs don't work when doing it, so you likely need to rely on the auto-aim feature most of the time to actually hit anything if you intend to also avoid being hit. Since it was based on Tomb Raider and it stole most of its mechanics from it, now it has some quite stiff controls for moving, platforming and fighting. But the game was made with those mechanics in mind, so once you get used to it, all goes well. Every level has a few secret areas here and there usually with some health, ammo, and sometimes a nice easter egg or some rare weapon. And talking about weapons, there are a ton of them. Pistols, shotguns, crossbows, flamethrowers, lasers, you name it, the Duke has it in his arsenal. Every other level has a surprise item that unlocks a challenge in between levels for a nifty upgraded version of an existing weapon. The areas where these challenges happen are also used as arenas for a multiplayer mode where a Duke has to fight another Duke to the death. This must be some kind of sick evil alien plot. The visuals aren't anything special but they look good enough for the PS1. It's about what you'd expect. The part that draws the most attention are the outfits Duke uses in different eras. The game isn't so short but there are a few levels in each period, having then only three other than the present to explore and then not many different styles for Duke and the enemies to dress up to. The first level of the game, in the present day New LA, works a bit like a hub level in between your time travels to access the other ones. And it's interesting to see how its appearance changes each time you come by as a result of the alien invasion. I feel like the animations deserve a bit of recognition as well. Yes, they are a bit stiff, but there's a surprising number of unique animations for both Duke and the enemies. Many things can be interacted with or destroyed and there's a nice variety to the enemy death animations, complete with some alien dismemberment. It's packed with movie references, from Holy Grenades to a DeLorean on a main shaft, without mentioning all the classic one-liners the Duke says every now and then. Oh, if only I had my flux capacitor with me. The sound effects fit well and Duke's voice actor goes wisecracking along the way. But the music seems to lack any music. I get that the game is a bit exploratory and they do fit the theme of each level, but it often feels too quiet for what's supposed to be an action hero game. But surprisingly enough, some of them will stick to the back of your mind. If you enjoyed the old Tomb Raider's style, you can accept the Duke Nukem character as the outdated action hero parody stuck in the 90s that he is, and if you got some time to kill, hey, now I get it then you should give this game a try. It's a really fun game, and it's gonna provide you with quite a few hours of gameplay. It's also not that difficult, like we said, just sidewalk and you should be fine. But whatever you do, do not, I repeat, do not turn off the auto-aim. We'll be ending this episode here, as always, tell us your thoughts about this game, and what you'd like to hear about next in the comments below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you liked the video, and subscribe to our channel, and you can click here if you want to see our last video, and I'll see you on the next one. Till then, bye.